So when I was in the hospital, I lost literally everything from here down. So diaphragm, bowel, bladder, I had uh, not a, a strong grip at all, zero grip on my right hand. So um, that, was, that was weird for me because, I mean, as a kid, like, you're like, okay, I have to pee, so I'm going to pee. I have to have, you go number two, so I'm going to go number two. So it was, like, way different for me. I had a leg bag. I had uh, stool softeners. I had pericolase. I did, you know, I, I had the whole shebang. Um, and the more that I recovered, the more things came back. So right now I'm able to, to, to go number one and two. Uh, but fortunately slash... No, I'm not even say unfortunately, but fortunately, um, when I have to go to the restroom, it's it's can be somewhat of a countdown. But uh, you know, I, I I manage. Here's the three questions people want to ask when you're in a wheelchair: How did you get hurt? Will you ever walk again? Can you have sex? Not in that order. You know, but those are the three questions people want to ask right away. Um, and for me, fortunately, the answers are, you know, hey, I got hurt doing something beautiful that I love. I don't know if I'll ever walk again. And thank God I can still have sex. Yeah, I mean, it was uh, one of the first things I remember in the hospital. I'm there with my dad. It was like right after I got injured. It was like a day or two after and my dad's there and the nurse is there and she's helping me bathe or whatever and I fortunately got a little excited and my dad looks at the nurse and he goes that's a good thing right <laughs> I um, ended up getting addicted to narcotics because all I wanted to do was sleep and um, I um, it was just it was just so hard trying to adapt and learn all over again. And it's like you just become a child again. And you're there and your mom is bathing you and your, you know, your dad is like trying to carry you around. It just, it blew my mind how I went from being so independent to just starting all over again, to the days that I don't even remember as, as an infant. I just started all over again, you know, like, the diapers and, you know, like peeing yourself, wetting the bed and, you know, like all of that, someone helping you brush your teeth. It was so, it was such a, a spin in my life that I have, I, I didn't think I'd be able to get out of it or find any strength or faith in myself or in life at all. And I got addicted to the narcotics and I remember the day that they got me off of it and I could have, if if I could have, I would have kicked my sister <laughs> because I was so angry that I didn't have the drugs anymore. Nine months in, I remember them doing this test on me because they like, and they like prick sort of like your anus or something like that. Anyway, if it, if it does something, whatever it's supposed to do, like maybe close up or like have a reaction or something, they're like, oh, this is good because that means you're getting something at like the very low, lower point. Because I was able, before I could even go to the, you know, urinate, I guess, on my own or whatever, they, my bowels came back first, like nine months into it. But I was still cathing. But that was big, too, because I didn't have to be on a bowel program, and all of that was behind me. So I think the bowel program was another thing that was really, um, for those first nine months, affected me mentally more than anything. Like, is there anything sexy about this? Like, how can I even do this with my husband who was helping me, you know? I mean, they told me that, you know, you're probably not going to walk again. They can't give you any specific yes or no answer. Um, but the walk again, I mean, the in, like, incontinence. I mean, there's just so much that comes with damaging of the spinal cord. And that's the thing is some people, it's always different. Like some people do have some movement. Some people don't have movement. Some people have sensations. Some people don't. And so they can't explain it, and it's only you who can really know what's going on with your body. Like my situation specifically, it's weird. I have sensation on my left side of the body. So if like sometimes you can like touch my leg and I'll know you're touching my leg. 
Like I can't feel hot or cold or pain or anything like that, but it's just, it's just weird. It's so weird. Um, yeah, um, I had that like when I went to cosmetology school. Um, that's kind of something that I've always wanted to do. I always had wanted to do hair and makeup. I'm extremely girly. And so when I tried it out and it just, it wasn't working for me because of my situation, that was really, that really like made me, I don't know, it was hard because I, you know, I tried my hardest and it just, it wasn't, it wasn't going to work with my situation. So that really sucked a lot because that was something I really wanted to do. And now I kind of have to like rethink my whole, like what I've wanted, what I want to do with my life. So, um, that was pretty hard. And then, um, yeah, I don't know. I've had those periods for sure. I think it's kind of normal. Every time around my uh, accident, April 30th, I get kind of, I have like a wacky month. I'm just kind of like not, it's not my month, not my, not very, the happiest person in April. <laughs> um, so yeah, I definitely have those periods for sure. I thought laying there, I was like, oh, you know, I'll, I'll just be like, uh, I'll just be paralyzed like from the waist down, you know, I'll be able to push myself in a wheelchair and all that. You know, and then finally, you know, as days go on, they're like, dude, you're, uh, you're gonna have no movement from the neck down, you know, you're gonna be on a ventilator the rest of your life. And, uh, you know, it's, it, at first there's a lot of anger, you know, like, why? You know, why, why'd you choose me to happen to me? You know, I got two kids and I can't throw a baseball to them. I can't kick the ball, you know, all this stuff, you know, and uh, as time went on, you know, it's like I had to, I had to think to myself and say, Say like, hey, do I want to be miserable and be pissed off, or uh, do I want to accept what happened to me and move on? You know, and I had to accept it and move on. I think it's when um, you have no control of your body and your body decides to have an accident at a party, or you kind of you're you're just in a normal setting. Something like that would never happen. So now to deal with something like that, it's just one, humiliating, and two, how do you explain that to the people around you that care for you? And um, I think that most of us can deal with the ability of not walking at some point. We'll figure it out, we'll manage. But when you have no control of what your body does outside of you, I think that's, that's frustrating, and I think it humbles you to a different degree. Yeah, so the first first two weeks um, after the crash I was in intensive care and that was that was the hardest two weeks of it for sure um, you know having no control over bowel or bladder function and um, you know just the hardest part about it was just not knowing um, you know not knowing if any of that would ever return or um, you know wondering how how you're gonna live like that you know so um, yeah, that was that was one of the one of the toughest things was just being in the hospital those first few weeks and not knowing um, not knowing how it was going to go. But uh, yeah, by the time I got home, uh, most of that stuff had kind of sorted itself out. So, um, but yeah, that's that's definitely one of the biggest struggles with the spinal cord injury. I think it's it changes <laughs> it changes the whole entire way you live your life, really. So. Fortunately, I had a fierce mother that intercepted that language that the doctor gave us, meaning that the doctor's prognosis was that I had a one in a million chance of ever feeding myself. And those words never came into my room because she did not allow that. I'm not a general statistic. You can tell me technically what you've done to my body in terms of stabilizing my neck. You can tell me facts of a sedentary lifestyle, meaning what happens to the body if you don't move it. There's a long list of complications that occur. But don't group me into a statistic that is going to project my future. You know, I'm not all right with that. I don't do that well with authority, especially when I was younger. Um, telling me what I will or won't do or what I can and can't be. My mother didn't allow that. I didn't accept that. When I did learn of those words, it's like, yeah, right, man. Yeah, I'm, I'm comfortable. I mean, I would definitely prefer to have more function. I would definitely 
if I had the option to be stronger, I would absolutely take it. You know, I have a caregiver that comes in in the morning and he helps me, you know, get dressed and take a shower and all this stuff. And I would prefer not to have that happen. You know, I'd prefer to be able to do everything independently. But, you know, I've developed a system. You know, I'm, I'm cool with my routine. I, I, I just I learned to adapt, you know. If they said, hey, Jess, you can walk or you can feel your body and be able to use the restroom by yourself, I'd rather feel my whole body and use the restroom by myself than walk. But neither one of those are an option today.